Greeting, Body of Messiah. Mark Pulley here with Yahweh Yeshua Assembly in Fort Myers, Florida, bringing you another teaching concerning Yah's laws and commandments. I want to share a, a nugget with you, something that came to me earlier in this week, and I put a, a little teaching of it on Facebook, but I want to bring it on video uh, because that will just reach a different percentage of people because Yah's laws and commandments and faith in his commandments and faith in the promises when you obey those commandments are a must to receive from Yahweh. Now we all face situations and in order to receive deliverance, in order to receive breakthroughs, in order to receive answers, solutions to the situations that the enemy throws at us or that we just find ourselves in, sometimes it's our fault because of decisions we made, or sometimes it's just because of the way the world system is. We have to be a people that obey Yahweh's laws and commandments, and that we have to also be a people that have faith in what Yahweh promises. And so the nugget that I want to share with you is this, that if you don't believe in Yahweh's salvation, if you don't believe in anything that the Torah commands us or that Yahweh's word commands us, then you will never receive the promises or the salvation or the healings or the breakthroughs that Yahweh wants to give you. It is Yahweh's will that you and I have a life of peace. It is Yahweh's will that you and I have a life that is full of health and wholeness, that we have a sound mind, that we have victory in every area of our life, that his joy would be our strength, so on and so forth. But now, if you do not believe what Yahweh's word says and what Yahweh's word commands us how to live and what to do, how to respond. If you don't believe, say in the Sabbath, you're never going to receive from Yahweh. If you don't believe in not having any other Elohims or gods before you, then you will not receive. If you do not believe in that it's Yahweh's will to heal you, whether it's emotional, whether it's if it's in your soul realm, whether it's in your physical body, then you will never receive it. If you don't believe that Yahweh will make a way for you where there seems to be no way, then you'll never experience it unless Yahweh just reaches out out of his mercy and does something for you through his gifts. But if you are walking by faith, if you are walking not by your senses, but, but living your life according to Yahweh's laws and commandments and His promises, then you have to believe all that is written in the scriptures concerning how you are to believe, how you are to live, and, how, and what and what you are not to do in your life, that you are not to be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. You are not to worship false images. You are not to eat things that have been sacrificed unto idols. You are not to eat things that Yahweh says is unclean. So there are things in Yahweh's laws and commandments that we are told not to do. And you have to accept them and receive them by faith. Mark 4, verse 20, in the parable of uh, the sower, the sower sows the word. 
it says in verse 20 that if you will accept and receive his word, then his word will produce 30, 60, and a hundredfold. His word will produce fruit in your life, but in order for that to happen, you have to accept it. You have to receive it. And if you don't accept it, if you don't receive it, you can't believe in it, and you can't walk by faith in it. And then the word, the promise, will have very little effect upon your life. And so the nugget that I want to share with you is that you cannot receive something that Yahweh commands or promises if you don't believe it. I remember years ago when we first started out, you know, people didn't believe in praying in tongues. People didn't believe in the gifts of the Spirit. So then they never had to worry about receiving it because it would not work for them. Even if they got themselves in a situation and they needed the gift of the working of miracles, say, to work in their life, it wouldn't work. Why? Because they had no faith. Because they had no seed sown in their hearts from Yahweh's word concerning the gift of the working of miracles or the gifts of healings. You know, I remember one time a minister saying, if you don't believe in healing, that's fine, but you don't ever have to be concerned about being healed unless you go through just medical science because it will not work. Same way with prosperity or increase, financial increase, spiritual increase, or increase in any type. If you do not receive it, if you do not believe in it, you don't need to worry about the, the gifts of healings working for you because they just won't work. They just won't work. So it is of the utmost importance that you believe in all that Yahweh commands. If you don't believe in giving and receiving, you don't need to worry because when drought comes, financial drought comes, inflation comes, you're going to struggle. And why are you going to struggle? Because you did not give. And Yeshua said, give and it shall be given unto you. So if you haven't been consistently giving, you will not receive. He also commanded in the book of Malachi to bring all your tithes and offerings into the storehouse. The storehouse is his kingdom. So if you are not consistently giving into his kingdom, whether it's into a ministry, whether it's into his temple, his people, then when your difficult time comes, you're, you're just going to have a real hard time and it's going to be very difficult to go through it because you have not sown, you have not given, you have not brought your tithes and offerings into his temple, and he doesn't have anything to multiply back to you. Think of it this way. If a farmer has seed, say he wants a corn crop, but he doesn't plant that corn, he just leaves it in his barn, and he doesn't do anything with it. Well, he cannot complain that he, when it's harvest time and everybody else is harvesting their corn, he cannot complain that it didn't work. Why? Because he never gave. He never planted it. And that is why, even in difficult times, you must continue giving of your tithes and offerings into Yahweh's storehouse, into his kingdom, into his people reaching out to help those that are in need. And because if you ever come to a place of being in need, you will then have something to access. You will have something to harvest. I remember one time I sowed into a ministry that was believing for some transportation. But they didn't want to buy that transportation until they could pay for it in cash. And so we sent an offering. 
And one of the things that Yahweh quickened in my heart was because you gave into their transportation need, you will never go lacking for transportation. And since that time, we never have. Because Yahweh is faithful. He will do what His Word says He will do. But if you don't believe it, you will not receive it. If you don't believe in healing, you don't have to worry about being healed. If you don't believe in miracles, you don't have to worry about receiving a miracle. If you don't believe in prosperity, you don't have to worry about receiving prosperity. If you don't believe in giving to other people and helping them and sowing your tithes and offerings into Yahweh's storehouse, you don't ever have to receive it. You know, I see on Facebook all the time people saying, oh, they don't have enough. You know, can you please help? And yet I also read where they're bashing people that tithe and give offerings into Yahweh's kingdom. It's no wonder they're, they're in a drought. And in Jeremiah 15, I'm no, not 15, excuse me, Jeremiah 17, here, let's just flip over there, Jeremiah 17, and look at what it says. Oh, pages are sticking. Jeremiah 17, and it, it says in verse 7, Blessed is the man that trusts in Yahweh. And when you trust in Yahweh, you'll have no problem obeying all that He commands. And whose hope Yahweh is. Then it says, For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, that spreads out her roots by the river, and shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Notice it says, you shall not be careful in the year of drought. I mean, drought does come because of the way the world is, and the way the world's wickedness is. But you, as a Torah observant believer, you, as one that believes in Yahweh, believes in Yahshua, believes in all that he commands us to do, which includes giving and receiving tithes and offerings. He said here that when drought comes, you'll not be careful. What does that mean? That means you're not going to have to worry about it. You're, you know, whether gas gets $7 a gallon, you're not going to have to worry about it. Whether food gets what used to be $100 a week is now $500 a week, you're not going to have to worry about it. Why? He supplies all your need according to His riches and glory by Messiah. Now you just stay obedient to obey what Yahweh's laws and commandments say, and you believe them, and you obey them, and you do them, then Matthew 6.33 will be yours. Seek first the kingdom of Yahweh and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. You won't have to worry about anything because He will supply all your need. But if you're disobeying His laws and commandments, regardless of what that law or commandment is, you cut yourself up off from the supply of the Master. Now, we don't want to do that. So now, <clears throat> there's three scriptures I want to share with you. And these scriptures all say about the same thing, that it will be done according to your faith. So according to what you believe in, if you believe in healing, then it will be done for you according to your faith. If you believe in giving and receiving and you keep exercising faith in it and you keep obeying Yahweh's commandments concerning giving and receiving, then it will be done unto you. If you believe in signs, wonders, and miracles, and the word of knowledge, and the word of wisdom, and all the other um, gifts of the Spirit, and the pumpkin pie things in the scriptures, then it will be done unto you as long as you are obeying Yahweh's laws and commandments. Two important facts. We must live according to Yahweh's laws and commandments. All of them. Not a few of them, not the ones we pick and choose, 
but all of them. And as we do live and obey according to Yahweh's laws and commandments, the promises connected to those laws and commandments, like in Malachi 3, 10 and 11, when you bring your tithes and offerings into the storehouse, he said he will rebuke the devourer. If you don't bring them into the kingdom, he will not rebuke the devourer. Rebuking the devourer literally means Satan, stop it. That's what it means. And then it says, and he will open unto you the windows of heaven to pour out so much blessing where there is not room enough to receive it. Now, I've not experienced that promise yet in the fullness, but I'm still stepping out in faith. I'm still believing and I'm still obeying that commandment to the best of my ability. Now, if I fail to give unto someone when Yahweh says to give it and my mind talks me out of it, I just ask him to forgive me and I try to make it right. But I also try to do whatever he puts in my heart to do. When I see that person on the corner, to give unto them, even if it's your last five dollars. And here's the key, Yahweh's not trying to get something from you, he's trying to get something to you. So when you give and it, and it empties your account out, he's trying to give unto your bosom, press down, shaking together, and running over. And the way he does that is you first have to give. Remember in the book of Kings, when that widow and her son had no more food and the prophet said, first make me a little cake first. And she obeyed him and then she had an abundance left over. And her, her oil kept multiplying. Her food kept multiplying until the drought was over. That is the Elohim in which we serve. But you and I have to do what he says to do. We have to obey his commandments and we have to keep walking by faith. We have to keep trusting in Yahweh that he makes a way where there seems to be no way. He opens doors that no man can open. Okay, in Mark chapter 15 and verse 28. Mark chapter 15. Um, actually, there was... Yeah, Mark chapter 15, verse 28. Actually, there's a verse I want to read before that. It's in Mark chapter 9. In verses 27 through 30. This is about two blind men. And in verse 27, two blind men followed Yeshua, crying, saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. So obviously, these blind people were Torah observant. And just because you're Torah observant doesn't necessarily mean you're not going to have situations or needs in your life. And then it says, And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him, saying, Yahshua said unto them, Believe, believe you that I am able to do this. Meaning, they asked him to heal their blindness. And then he said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? And then they said, Yes, Master. And then he said, Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. And then their eyes were open. So Yeshua said, he didn't say it was according to his power. It didn't say it was according to his anointing. It didn't say it was according that Yeshua was the Messiah. But he said unto the blind men, according to your faith, be it unto you, or according to, to, to that you believe that I am able to do this. Now in Matthew 8, we see that a leper, who was also Torah observant, came to him and said, If you will, you can make me clean. And Yahshua said, I will be thou clean. And he was set free from leprosy. Why? Because it is Yahweh's will to heal the sick. Now in Matthew 15, verse 28, this is a Canaanite woman, non-Israelite, she, she was not part of Israel. She was not part of um, the, the children's bread. She couldn't eat from the children's bread being a child of Israel. 
that did not belong to her. But yet Yeshua said unto her, Great is your faith, be it unto you even as you wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. She kept pressing in, even though she was not a daughter of Abraham. And we know in Luke 13, that woman who had a spirit of infirmity for 13 years, he said, whom Satan had bound, ought not this daughter of Abraham, a Torah observant woman, be loosed on this Sabbath day? And the answer is yes, she should be loosed on this Sabbath day. So it's according to what you believe, according to your faith. Your faith and your obedience in Yahweh's laws and commandments are of the utmost importance in you receiving. If you don't believe in healing, you'll never receive healing. If you believe in healing, you will receive healing. And especially when you use your faith, Mark eleven twenty four. Yahshua said, Whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them, and you shall have them. James said in James 5, that if you pray the prayer of faith, if you pray the prayer of faith, Yahweh will heal you. And if you've committed any sin, He will forgive you. What is the prayer of faith? The prayer of faith is believing you have received something before you ever experience it or see it. And see, it's of the utmost importance. You know, years ago we began learning, you know, about healing, about the gifts of the Spirit, about giving and receiving, about prosperity, about deliverance, about having a sound mind. And yes, there are a lot of people that perverted that and, you know, took it way out of context. But it still doesn't eliminate the biblical facts that those things are promised in Yahweh's Word. And there are certain commandments connected to it, like the commandment of giving, the commandments of bringing your tithes and offerings into the kingdom. Those are commandments. And the promises you'll receive. The promises the devourer will be rebuked. I've shared this many times. Linda and I, when we were going to a good uh, word church, a charismatic church back in 1980, now granted we didn't know about his name, we didn't know about, about the commandments, we didn't know about other things, but nonetheless they taught certain things that were biblical. And one of them was on tithes and offerings and giving and receiving. And so for a number of months, we're hearing this, we're hearing this, we're only responding with $5 and $10 here and there, and yet we were one to two weeks behind in all of our bills, all of them, no matter what we did. No matter if I got overtime, we're still behind, we're still behind, we're still behind. So finally, faith came from hearing Yahweh's commandments. Faith arose in our hearts. We stepped out in faith and we said, we're going to start tithing. Our first tithe check was $100. I couldn't wait until the offering came. And they always taught on giving and receiving during the offering. I ran up there and I was so pumped to give our first tithe. And that week, our bills became current. They went from being a week to two weeks past due to being current. We did not receive any financial increases on our jobs. We did not get some money coming from here, there, or the other thing. Somehow, Yahweh made a way where there seemed to be no way, and He brought our debts to current. And he, that continued as long as we, and we've always kept bringing our tithes and offerings into the storehouse. We've had challenges. We've had challenges, in, and even to this day, we are still believing that our house is paid in full. It's almost paid in full, but we're still believing that Yahweh is making a way where there seems to be no way that our house is paid in full. Our house is paid in full. And you know, when we, do, when we retire, we're believing to have received enough provision for our retirement, 
so that we can go to the mountains in New Mexico or wherever we desire to go and spend three, four months and then come back to Florida for the, for the winter when it's not quite as hot and humid. And we're believing to have received that. And that even though it looks like there's no way, we're still believing that he's making a way where there seems to be no way. I don't know how he's going to do it. I don't know when he's going to do it. We just keep believing. We keep stay, staying in faith. The gift of the working of miracles is at work on our behalf. And we just praise him that it's a done deal. That it's a done deal. That it's a done deal. So I encourage you. What Yahweh did for me, he will do for you. If you obey his laws and commandments. There are some things you may not understand. You may not know. You may not have learned. You know, like we didn't know at that time about his name. We didn't know about obeying uh, the Torah. We didn't know about not having any other gods before us, so on and so forth. We didn't know about biblical foods, but nonetheless, we obeyed and did what we knew to do. And then as time came, uh, revelation came, understanding came, as we continued to listen to the word, no matter who it was that was speaking it, and we saw an article on Facebook, and light came. Praise Yahweh. So, in one more scripture, in Mark chapter 5, you know this is about the woman with the issue of blood. She said if, if she would only touch the hem of his garment, she would be healed. And that's in verse 28 of Mark chapter 5. In verse 29, Yahshua said that immediately power went out of his body, and he said, Who touched me? And for fear, knowing that, you know, she was healed, she confessed that it was him. And Yahshua said, oh, let's, let's just read it. Verse 33, But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was well done in her, came and told him, came and fell down before him, and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith has made you whole. Go in peace, and be whole of thy plague. Now, he said her faith, her believing in his healing power, her faith believing that if she touched the hem of his garment, she would be healed, was rewarded by his healing power. Notice he didn't say that my power has made you whole. He said your faith has made you whole. So this tells us how important obeying his commandments and his laws and faith are. You need them both. You can't just be focused on obeying the Torah because many that are focused on obeying the Torah they kick out, they stop doing certain things in Torah because of misteaching. Where Yahshua, it's in, the, it's in the Renewed Covenant, Yahshua established it, Apostle Paul established it, we need to keep believing all of his commandments. All of his commandments. All of his laws all of his guidelines and instructions we cannot pick and choose so i pray as you know the bottom line and the nugget is you will only have what you believe and what you receive from the torah from yahweh's commandments from yahweh's scriptures if you don't believe in yahweh's salvation you will not receive it if you don't believe in Yahweh's healing power, you won't receive it. If you don't believe that He is willing and able to perform signs, wonders, and miracles for you, you won't receive it. If you don't believe in His tithes and offerings, you don't have to worry about the devourer being rebuked. You don't have to worry about um, the windows of heaven being open. You will just have to suffer like the world system suffers. But Yahweh has set us apart from this world system. And part of that, 
is in the area of finances. Read Deuteronomy 7. All Yahweh was trying to do was get the people of Israel to obey him. And he had many great promises. Promises that they would be so blessed above every any other nation. Here, let's just look at that. Um, Deuteronomy 7, I think it's verse 15. Nope, that's on healing. Uh, let's see. Let me find it. Here, I, I can find it quicker on my phone. I don't, this Bible's fairly new and I don't have it as marked. Um, let's see. Pardon me as I look for it. Um, Deuteronomy 7. Deuteronomy 7. I'll tell you when I get there. All right, verse 14. Now read the whole chapter to take it in context. Because he's telling the people, if you obey my laws and commandments, you'll be blessed, you'll be blessed. And he says, you'll be blessed more than any other people. Your men and women will be able to have children, and your animals will be able to have an offspring. Will have offspring. But he says, you'll be blessed more than all the other pagan nations. See, we are set apart to obey Yahweh's laws and commandments. And part of that being set apart to obey Yahweh's laws and commandments is that we should not struggle as the world struggles. When there's inflation like there is now, we shouldn't be careful as we read in Jeremiah 17. We don't need to be careful. Why? Because he supplies all our need. He has been providing all kinds of things for us here um, Here's another good one. Go to Leviticus. I know some people have a real problem with um, giving and receiving. They just have a hard time with that, even Torah observant people. Um, in Leviticus 26, again, read the whole thing. But it says in verse 10, and it talks about in verse 1 and 2, about obeying Yahweh's laws and commandments. It says, you will clear out the old food supplies to make room for new ones. And that means when the harvest time comes, you will get rid of the old food just to make room for the new food. That means you will still have plenty of food in your cupboards, freezer, and refrigerator when you go to the store and you buy more provision and you bring it home, you'll have to hunt for places to put that provision. Why? He said it right here. Observe my days of worship and respect my holy tent. I am Yahweh. This is what I'll do if you live by my laws and carefully obey my commandments. I will give you rain at the right time. The land will produce its crops, and the trees in the field will produce their fruit. That's prosperity. Threshing time will last until grape gathering, and grape gathering will last until, the t until planting. You will eat all you want and live securely in your land. See, all Yahweh was trying to do was get the children of Israel to obey his laws and commandments. And when you believe and obey his laws and commandments, you will reap the harvest of obeying his laws and commandments. And part of that harvest is to have more than enough. Part of that, now granted, many of us, we don't have orchards, we don't have fruit trees, we don't have cattle, but what we do have and how we buy things is through the financial realm. And when you give finances, you shall reap finances. What did the master say in Mark 10, verse 30? He said, 
that if you will if you will give for the gospel's sake if you will give for the gospel's sake you here let's just read it i'm having a hard time remembering the exact quote mark chapter 10 and like i always say all the good promises come from the book of mark verse 29 yeshua answered and said verily i say unto you there is no man that has left house or brother and sisters father mother wife children lands for my sake and the good news so in other words there is no man that is given any aspect he says but he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time and then it describes the exact same things that he gave so whatever you give Yahshua said you will reap a hundredfold now if you don't believe that that's fine because you'll never reap it because you'll never do it I personally believe it that everything I give I shall reap a hundredfold and I give it for the purpose of the kingdom for people to see who the Messiah is. For people to understand that Yahweh wants to bless them. That Yahweh wants to provide for them. And that they need, when they receive Messiah, that they need to start living according to his laws and commandments. And to walk as Yeshua walked. Now, we can go over many other miracles. But the bottom line is this. If you don't believe it, you won't receive it. If you believe it, you will experience it. So I encourage you, believe in Yahweh's salvation. Believe in Yahweh's divine protection, that no evil will come near you. Believe that you will live and not die and declare the works of Yahweh, the book of Psalms says. Believe that the devourer is rebuked, the windows of heaven are opened. As you obey his commandments of bringing your tithes and offerings into the kingdom and to give unto either ministries or into to help widows orphans or individuals that are in need if you believe i want to encourage you to believe in all the gifts of the spirit in all the gifts of the spirit believe in healing believe in miracles believe that when you call for the elders of the assembly and they pray the prayer of faith in the name of Yahweh, and they lay hands on the sick, you shall recover. Believe what Yahshua said, that when you believe in his name, you shall cast out demons. You shall raise the dead. You shall heal the sick. You shall cleanse the lepers. So whatever it is, believe in obeying the Sabbath. Believe in eating biblical foods, and as you do, you will reap a hundredfold in whatever you give, whatever you step out and obey. Yahweh wanted the children of Israel to obey His laws and commandments. He wants you and I to obey His laws and commandments. And as we obey His laws and commandments, we will receive the promise connected to those commandments. So I pray this encourages you. I pray this helps you. I pray this will give you food to think and to re research the scriptures. Not, yeah, remember this. Malachi 3 verse 6. I am Yahweh and I do not change. We quote that about other things in the Torah in obeying the Torah we need to we need to believe that that's applicable to everything in the renewed covenant as well also in Hebrews it says Messiah Yeshua the same yesterday today and forever so he's the same whether it's about obeying the Sabbath or whether it's about healing signs wonders and miracles and having more than enough Yahweh doesn't want you to struggle. He wants you to be like a tree planted by the rivers that, that bears fruit in its season. And even if there's a drought comes, you are not careful, to, you're not worried about it because Yahweh always makes a way 
where there seems to be no way. So be encouraged. Keep believing the word. Keep obeying the commandments. And keep believing to have received all that he has promised. In the power of Yahweh's name. Until next time, shalom, shalom.